Good morning. Today I welcome you to the beginning of a new series. Uh, I am an admirer of Joyce Rupp, who has written extensively on spirituality. And I invite you to join me during these next six weeks as we explore her book, which is entitled The Cup of Our Life. And all of us have been very conscious of what our lives entail, uh, especially since Lent this year, as we have been grappling with the reality of a pandemic in our world. And so what is the cup of our life? Um, the first cup is, this is a favorite one of mine. It was a gift at Christmas and it's entitled Comfort and Joy. I think most of us will appreciate to just have some comfort and joy in a world that is filled with turmoil at this time. But as we prepare to share some time together, let us pray together. Loving God, thank you that you are the giver of comfort and joy. Thank you that as we anticipate to share in Joyce Rupp's beautiful meditations and her invitation to join her on the spiritual journey and exploration, we ask that you give us the peace of mind that we need. We also pray, O oh God, that we will receive inspiration, that we will be willing to do some work when it comes to our own spiritual growth. And so bless us for this time that we will share online from today until the, towards the end of July. In your precious name we pray. Amen. So the idea, if uh, you've checked Facebook, will be that uh, today we will have a brief inter introduction and look at the first session. So it's a six-week series, and the first one is The Cup of Our Life, which is the title of Joyce Rupp's book. And then week two is The Open Cup. Week three will be The Chipped Cup. Week four, we will look at brokenness when we look at the broken cup. Week five, the cup of compassion. And we'll wrap it up on week six with the blessing cup. So I hope that you are intrigued and that you will join us. Each session will have um, a specific format. I recommend that everyone has a journal. It doesn't have to be a beautifully leather-bound one like the one that I received from the United Church. But a notebook of any kind will be very helpful, a pen or a pencil, because we are going to explore doing some journaling. And in this, it will be really good if we interact with one another. I will post my email address on the Facebook page below this and invite you to share your experiences with me. There may only be a few of us that do this together, but it is so helpful if we share our experiences, our insights, perhaps even um, something that you did in nature, went for a walk or did something special where you heard God prompting you. Every time we will share one of the little quotes that appear in um, Joyce Trump's book, and for today, I'm going to share one from Honey Nowen. Every time you listen with great attentiveness to the voice that calls you the beloved, you will discover within yourself a desire to hear that voice longer and more deeply. And each week, as we begin our reflection, there will be a time of quiet, as you will see, I've lit, lit a candle. Uh, the light actually sort of infuses it, but you can see the candle is lit. So we will light a candle as a symbol that God is present with us. Even though we share in this discussion online, God is with us. We will share in a short passage of scripture, one that is relevant for the topic of each week, and then we will spend a few moments in quiet, just thinking about that passage and to hear if there's something that God is saying to us in that verse. And 
there are a few comments that we will share afterwards and then our closing prayer. So I hope that you enjoy this time with us. Today's passage of scripture in session one comes from Isaiah chapter 43 verses 1 to 7. And so we listen for the word of God to us. But now says your God, the one who created you, O Jacob, and perhaps Rachel and Leah, the one who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you will not be burnt, and the flame will not consume you. For I am your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Sheba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight, and honoured, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your love. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my children from afar, my sons and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Those verses from Isaiah 43. Thanks be to God. And so for this week, and perhaps you'd like to jot these down, and I will also jot them down below the post of this video clip. Every, every day during the week, we are called to do a short reflection. Today, the title is The Cup of My Life. And so I want us to live with that thought for the whole day. What does it mean, the cup of my life? What is my cup? And today I have come for the enjoy. What does it hold? And also, what would I like to fill it with? What are the things that I'd like to put in my cup? This cup that represents my life. And so for today, let's spend a few moments in quiet. Sit comfortably with your hands on your lap and your feet flat on the ground. Close your eyes or you may like to focus on the candle and take a few deep breaths. In. In, out, again, in, out. Now let's open our eyes. When we breathe in, it's helpful to say, I am. When we breathe out, let it be a love song to ourselves. And so I pray. I turn to you, Divine Creator, and I thank you for the person who I am. I am a cup of life. I have love and goodness within me. Help me to hear your music in my soul today and to smile in gratitude when I think of my own uniqueness. Let me not doubt my value or question my worth. Help me to know and to accept who I am. I am yours. May I bring life to my world. Amen. And so, 
Every week when you come to join me, bring your favorite cup with you. We will talk about different cups, but this is the one that will journey with me throughout the six weeks. My cup that says comfort and joy. And so hold your cup. Find one in your cupboard that you really like, that comfort cup, the one that you normally choose when you're going to sit on the deck and have a cup of tea or coffee and hold it in your hands. Notice its style. This is an unusually big one. And it's shaped almost like a soup bowl. Notice its style. Is it pottery? Is it glass? Is it a wooden cup? Is it a metal cup? Is it a plastic cup? Which is your favorite cup? Notice its shape, its color. This one is an off-white with gray and red writing, uh, little red snowflakes. And describe it. Describe it to yourself. And notice its size. How much can you put in it? Be conscious of yourself as a cup held in God's hands. And so as we hold a cup, and often on a cold day, it's so nice to fold one's fingers around a cup that is holding a hot beverage, perhaps hot chocolate, which is what this one's made for. And imagine God holding you in God's hands, just like a precious cup. So every day when you hold your cup, be conscious of God holding you in God's own hand. Accept your uniqueness. That is what the passage in Isaiah is all about. That God has called each of us by name. That we are precious, more precious than any other possession. It's a beautiful analogy, the way Isaiah says how God is willing to trade for us, to give countries and nations and all kinds of things, because we are more precious than that. Thank God for creating you just as you are. In preparation for last Sunday's worship, Kevin and I watched Mr. Rogers, the movie that Tom Hanks plays, the character of Mr. Rogers. Now, Kevin and I grew up in South Africa, so we never had the privilege of watching Mr. Rogers. Uh, it's a fine day in the neighborhood, I think it was called, but many of you will be familiar with that program. It was just amazing to see how this person could affirm every single person he met and every single person that came onto his show to tell them that they are just as they're supposed to be and that they are liked and loved just for who they are. They didn't have to change. But because they were loved and because they were affirmed, they did change. They became more open. They became more loving. And so if I can recommend a movie, please do see, uh, what is it, A Happy Day in the Neighborhood? But it is worthwhile watching. And then for each day during the next six weeks, I challenge us all again to write in our journal something that came to us in the scripture or in the idea of being a cup, of being part of God's world, God's universe, and that we are precious more than anything else. And begin by thanking God for creating you, for making you who you are, unique and precious. Because Journaling helps us to respond to what we believe God is saying to us. 
And you can begin by saying, Dear God, and then write a simple letter. Tell God what's on your mind. And imagine, both you as the cup in God's hands, and also what we put in our cup. If this is a symbol of our life, the cup of our life, what do I place in it every day? And so today, I want to begin by placing in my cup compassion. The care that I have for my family, for my friends, for community, for the, the people in the Rublin community of faith and our own wider community. Pray for those in Crocus Court, for those in hospital, and place them all in this cup. And then when I come to prayer, I can place them in God's hands. And it's not only me, but our whole community that forms the cup of our life. When I think about God loving me unconditionally, as I am, what responses come to me? When I read Isaiah 43, what is it that is evoked within me? What emotion is uppermost in my mind? Is it gratitude? Is it a loving response? Is it just a feeling of awe and wonder? Whatever it is, write it down. And so I pray that these six weeks of study and spiritual guidance will be something that will help us explore the depth of our relationship with Jesus. And that we will learn something about ourselves and I trust something more about God and how God reaches out to us regularly. This week, not only let God love you, but try to be a love song for others. I love Joyce Rupp's terminology. When we breathe in, we recognize I am. When we breathe out, we breathe out a love song. Firstly, for ourselves. We have to begin to accept ourselves the way we are. And then, once we've done that, we begin to breathe out a love song for others. It's all connected with God loving us, with us loving one another, as much as we love ourselves. And so I hope that you enjoy this exercise with me for the coming six weeks. Every day this week we will have a theme. And so today, the cup of my life. Tomorrow, a container of God's presence. The next day, the vessel of loving energy. Then the boundaries of the cup. The cup as my teacher, thirsting, fulfilling. What is it that I want God to pour into my cup? What do I thirst for? And then, before we meet again, integration and a short review of the week. So those are the things that we are going to jot down in our journals. If you'd like to fill it page a day, that's wonderful. But if you can write three or four lines every day, that's perfect. Begin. So every morning, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, every morning, I will place the theme for the day. <coughs> Not sure where that's coming from. Grab spring. Every day I will type in the theme for that day in the morning and remind you and encourage you to spend a few moments breathing in and breathing out and writing in your journal.
each day, we are also encouraged to spend a few moments quiet. Sometimes it's difficult to not think of something specific. And that is why a breathing exercise is so helpful. To breathe in, I am, and to breathe out. Firstly, a love song to ourselves, and then letting it grow and be a love song to others. Breathing out the love that God gives us for our family, for our community, for our friends, and particularly for those living far away. And so I'm so glad that we've made the start. And again, I pay tribute to Joyce Rupp because she is a wonderful author who has ex been exploring her own spirituality for decades and encourages us to do the same. Now, join me in prayer. Loving God, our spirituality is a part of who we are. And so as we explore what the cup of my life is all about, how it can be filled, but also how it can be poured out, or how it can be consumed, we ask for your inspiration, O oh God, every day, as we reflect particularly this week on the cup of my life, on it being a container of your presence, of our cup being a vessel for loving energy, of how we have to see that our cup also has boundaries, and how the cup can be my teacher. And when we come to day six, we recognize that we have a deep thirst for being full. And so go with us during this week as we again pause and acknowledge that we need you, O oh God. We need you to fill our cup. In the name of Christ, we offer this prayer. Amen. And so once again, I recommend that you go into your cupboard right now and find a cup and put it on your little shrine. If you have a table with a candle, perhaps a holding cross or a rosary, place your cup there and journey with your cup of love during the next six weeks with me. Thanks for joining us and until next time, keep breathing in and breathing out. Bye.